Hey guys, Booligan here with Booligan Shooting Sports. And today we are taking a look at my interpretation of the OSS and CIA's famous assassination pistol, the high standard HDM. The HDM is a modified version of the high standard HD, which was built in 1944 and was an integrally suppressed 22 long rifle uh, chambered pistol. The stories of this thing's testing and development go back to when the designer brought one in to FDR's Oval Office in the White House and popped a couple of shots into a planter or something like that to see if the president or anybody would notice. Uh, I'm sure this is FUD lore and historical FUD lore, but it's still kind of a fun story about how quiet and effective that pistol was. The original HDM had a true uh, integrated, integrally suppressed barrel. So the barrel was, you know, to about here. It was a couple inches long and it was ported. And then that used a different, I mean, it was a 1944 suppressor type. So it used wipes and, and I think like oil impregnated mesh and things like that. I, I, I'm not an expert on the HDM, just on the concept of it. I'm not an expert on that either, but I've done a little bit of research. But it made for a very quiet gun. They are exceedingly rare. They only made, you know, a couple hundred of them, um, as far as I know. But what's interesting is that they got used even, like, to today. Uh, there are reports that there the CIA um, and that certain other secret squirrel spy agencies still have the original HDMs in their inventory. I wanted to make something along the same lines. So what I started with is I found a mid-1950s production, pretty clean, high standard Sport King model uh, locally on Utah Gun Exchange. It was in pretty good shape. Uh, it had the normal full-length barrel, and I was like, cool, perfect. That would be a great start for me to build this project. Uh, one thing I really like about the Sport Kings, especially of this vintage, it has a couple of nice features. It has a slide catch for when you are out of ammo. Um, you don't want to dry fire really at all if you can avoid it, but you really want to minimize dry firing a old rim fire gun like this just because you can damage the firing pin you can damage the barrel they don't have some of the features in place that allow for a little bit safer rim fire firing so that means you're counting rounds you know from the heel release 10 round single stack magazine you're counting rounds if you want to avoid dropping a firing pin on an empty chamber so this model has the slide lock, which is a nice feature um, and helps prevent that from happening because when you're out of ammo, it locks back. Why these are really pretty reliable guns and make good suppressor hosts is because of this. You'll notice this is wide open here. Unlike something like a Ruger Mark series, which usually I have one down here, but it must be up in my one of my other safes. Um, that has a pretty small ejection port this has a wide open ejection port, which means you get really consistent and reliable ejecting. Unfortunately, having this big of an ejection port can lead to a loud port pop, which we'll talk about how I address that in just a second. The big part of this is obviously going to be the barrel. Where is it? <laughs> and the big answer to that is that there really isn't much of a barrel. I talked to my good buddy over at barrelthreading.com and I showed him the project and the idea that I wanted to do. And he said, yeah, cool, let's do it. So he went ahead and he cut down the barrel to about 2.6 inch length, which sounds like kind of crazy, but it's really not that crazy. Something like a Beretta, uh, like Model 21, um, that has a two and a half inch barrel. Uh, the LCP-22, whatever their name is for that, that has about the same length. So it's a 2.6 inch barrel. It has plenty of rifling to stabilize around. And you would actually be surprised how much velocity you still get out of standard velocity 22 ammo out of a 2.5 inch barrel. This thing should still be chronoing between like, depending on the ammo, 
between you know 800 feet per second and a thousand feet per second so it's it's got plenty of oomph behind it to still put a round out there to stabilize it where you lose the the most amount of functionality with having that short of a barrel is with a short sight radius which we'll talk about in just a moment but yeah so he cut the barrel down and he threaded it but the actual order that he had to do was he threaded the barrel first and then he cut it down because it's hard to get a good concentric clamp on the block so these are kind of cool how these disassemble you just press this button here at the front and then the barrel assembly slides off so this is what I gave him to thread. But otherwise, he would have had to clamp down on this. And if you're using like a three-jaw three, three jaw chuck, that can be tricky to get concentric and, and stable. So he actually clamped the barrel portion, threaded it, and then chopped it off. Luckily, this has a good concentric bore, so there was no concerns there. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I like the high standards over something like the Ruger Standard or the Ruger Mark Series is now the gun is disassembled for cleaning. These are striker-fired. And they um, are really pretty simple in operation. But yeah, being able to take it apart with no tools for cleaning and maintenance is really nice, especially compared to something like a Ruger Mark III, which necessitates that you have a rubber mallet and all sorts of other tools to get it disassembled. But yeah, so back to this. This is chamber, or excuse me, this is threaded in half by 28. So it's standard, same threads you're going to put on basically everything that's 22 long rifle. But I needed to be able to aim it still. So I designed and 3D printed an iron sight, which fits the contour of that barrel block and gives you a decent little sight picture, albeit a not too crazy long sight radius. Um, you know, about comparable to something... Well, let's see if we've got like a Glock 19 here. A little shorter than a Glock 19, but about a little shorter than the sight radius on a Glock 26 slide. So not the worst sight radius in the world. This was drilled and tapped to mount you see these top screws here. This was also drilled and tapped by BarrelThreading.com. They did a great job with it. They always do a great job. If you ever need any barrels threaded, they are really the guys to talk to. I mean, it's what their name is. So they do it very, very well. In order to suppress my suppressed pistol, I went with my Amtac Fire Ant. Um, this is a monocore suppressor, which means it doesn't use cups inside. It's just one stainless steel monocore. It has a very good uh, design in there. It suppresses very well. It's very easy to clean. And I love it. It's made here in Utah and I love it. It's it's really it's really a very good suppressor. I've had no issues with it on any of the random 22s that I run it on. And it's cool because you can run it on something like 57 by 28 or you can run it on like 17 HMR. It's not just limited to 22 long rifle. You can do some more interesting cartridges through it as well. But yeah, so that makes this a very nice little suppressed pistol. Now, as I mentioned, first round or port pop can be a not first round pop that's a different thing uh, but port pop is where when you shoot it that opens up that bolt or whatever mechanism opens up and you do get some sound coming out when it opens up and fires um, you also will get the sound of that spent casing falling out and hitting the ground um, and if you are an oss operative sneaking around a german submarine pen trying to get into a u-boat you know you need to be discreet so i made a modification which is going to make a lot of fuds and other people kind of angry but i don't care my modification i made was to formerly the safety these feature a manual thumb safety flips up flips down thumb safety has two functions in stock form the first function is it extends this little steel bar that's part of it and locks the slide, keeps the slide from coming back. It has a second part right in there that prevents the sear from moving forward when you pull the trigger. So I think you know where I'm going with this. I kept the first part, I deleted the second part. So now my safety no longer functions as a safety. 
Instead, my safety functions as a slide lock, except for instead of locking the slide back on empty, it keeps the slide locked with only about like a millimeter of movement. It keeps the slide locked when you shoot. Now that converts this to a single shot gun. So if you were to use that mode, we're gonna dry fire here. It's not good to do with this gun. We are on empty, but I'm dry firing just for sake of demonstration. So you would fire, you notice how it fires while still technically on safe, but the slide will not eject the round. What you then be able to do is drop that slide lock, pull back, which would eject that spent cartridge. You could catch it or whatever if you were being really discreet with this and then let it go forward and you're ready to go again. If you wanna do another shot like that, you then push that back up, do another shot, rinse and repeat. However, if you wanna shoot this like normal, you just keep this little lever down and the slide will reciprocate like normal. It'll eject the spent rounds and load the next ones automatically. This is still a semi-automatic gun. It just has the option of being very, very quiet by flipping that little quiet lever there. Um, I did that to the safety because the safeties for these are still available. If I decide I absolutely hate this functionality to it, um, then I can go ahead and just drop a safety back in there and it'll work just like as it did before. Um, but I thought if we're going to go full on OSS secret squirrel with this thing, you have to go full on OSS secret squirrel and you have to add a slide lock to keep that slide locked forward while shooting. So that's basically it. It's called the sport king. Kind of like calling it the short king. That's kind of fun because it's got a really short setup up front. It actually, it's kind of funny because it really looks good without the suppressor on and with a variety of muzzle devices on it. For example, this Strike Industries Warhog, uh, or Warthog, whatever they call it. It's, this was the one that was on my LaFrance M16K build, uh, but instead I, ha I finally have a Vortex flash hider on there, so it's a appropriate one. But like, Look how badass that looks. It's kind of like a little flash Gordon. It has that kind of ray gun aesthetic to it. Super, super, super cool. If you really want to like make FUDs mad at the range with your gun with a deleted safety and a suppressor, uh, take the suppressor off and throw something fun like a birdcage flash hider on there. I mean, that's such a dumb, ridiculous setup. It's very... It was a man from uncle. It's very man from uncle, this whole setup. Um, but I really, really like it. This was a fun build. I didn't really have to do a ton of work on it. It was just sort of me coming up with ideas and finding the right person to execute them. And that right person, when it comes to barrel work, is always barrelthreading.com. He does such a great job with this stuff. So yeah, that's sort of the overview of my high standard short king OSS assassination pistol. Um, we need to get out to the range and we need to do some very quiet shooting with this. Um, try to do that this weekend so we can get, you know, at least a short video up showing how this works. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of go over it, go over some of the features with you, explain why I made the choices that I made with it, why it is the way that it is and how it should work in practice. Um, as always, of course, thanks for watching.